Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. I'm Daily Wire Plus. Netanyahu returns to power, sworn in as Minister of Israel. I think this is this is a lot bigger story than people are making out. Yeah, there's the January 6th, there's the Republicans taking over, there's CRT in the schools and the drag queen shows and the war in Ukraine, and the list is endless. But this is getting swept under the carpet for some reason. And I think this is a lot bigger story for the United States even and the world for that matter. Netanyahu says the new government is determined to restore governance, peace, and personal security of the citizens of Israel. Israel is not a perfect country. So let's just settle that right now. Neither is the United States. But they are a lot more positive good, way more positive good, 100 to 1, as compared to the bad things. And the progressives, I mean, I even see here in upstate New York in a small town like Binghamton, people with free Palestine shirts on. I mean, you got to be, you got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. They try to give them their own state several times. They said no. And those who just say, well, they're a democracy. Well, that democracy picked Hamas as their government, a terrorist group. So let's just cut through before we all drown in it. And especially not because I'm a big Trump fan, still am. Netanyahu is very, very tight personally and politically with Donald Trump, President Trump. And those guys have been friends a long time, and not because uh, his Trump son-in-law is, is Jewish. They think a lot of the same ways. They look for their country's uh, strength, both economically and morally and militarily-wise. And remember something, younger people don't realize. The Arab states went after Israel twice, and Israel kicked their asses both times. Yeah, they had some help with equipment from the United States, but the Arab states had a crap load of help from the Russians. Which, by the way, their equipment was inferior to ours. So that should have been a hint that the Soviet Union was going to collapse soon anyway. But I don't want to get off too much on a tangent. Let's read the story. Well, before we get into it, though, I want to mention to all my subscribers, check your subscription status. Also check your notification status, because I've been getting a lot of messages. People have been getting unsubscribed. And had their notifications changed from all, which means you'll get notified of all my videos to no notifications at all. So please double check that. Thanks. Then, yeah, I already served more years as Israel's prime minister. I mean, he goes on with some of his history. This is an interesting part of the paragraph right here. When he was the uh, finance minister, he focused on turning the Jewish state toward capitalism as he reduced tax rates significantly. During his tenure, the debt-to-GDP ratio dropped to one of the lowest in the world. And that is hugely important. How much you owe compared to how much you produce. Very much like how you own your credit cards and your mortgage and what your salary and what you make is. And foreign investment reached record highs. Netanyahu embarked on his longest term as prime minister from 2009, serving 12 years. An unprecedented length of time. It's a parliamentary system, which our founders rejected. There's like 18 different parties, and if you don't have 50%, very much like Trudeau did. He only got 40-odd percent of the, the party, only got 40-odd percent of the vote. But they made a deal with another small party, so they go over 50%, and he stays prime minister. It would be very much like when... Donald Trump won. Republicans took over Congress. They would appoint him prime minister. Two years later, the House of Representatives switched to Democrats, and they would appoint a Democrat as president. And our founders rejected it because they know the perils of a parliamentary system. But I digress again. He brought that country around economically to a huge powerhouse. And that's how you're going to win the war in the Middle East. Yes, there's arms. Yes, there's bullets. Yes, there's tanks. Money, economy, that's what wins in the end. I think the Arabs finally saw that the Israelis were doing so well economically with their taxes being slashed 
and the way their GDP has grown exponentially that they thought we can't beat these guys. We thought maybe we would just wait until their economies collapsed, but it didn't. So they got the hand running on the wall. And that's why I think was the foundation for the Abraham Accords, which Trump should have got, by the way, a Nobel Prize. But don't hold your hand on your ass waiting. It's, you know, here's some of the, have attacked this coalition for including staunch nationalists, including Benzal, I can never pronounce the last names, at my ear, Ben Grief saying, I hear the opposition's constant laments about the end of the state and the end of democracy. That sound familiar to you? That sound familiar? If certain people win, it's the end of democracy. Well, first of all, the U.S. is a democracy. But this seems to be the same boilerplate uh, tactics they use worldwide. Interesting what he said here. I do expect it to respect the voters' decision and cease rebelling against the elected government. Having a different point of view and arguing, I was in the majority and the minority in local elected office. I was a council member for eight years, four years in minority, four years in the majority. Then uh, you recite the traditional blessing Jews say to thank God for enabling them to reach a particular milestone. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the world. We have lived and survived to reach this time. 1947, I believe, when Harry Truman recognized the state of Israel, nobody really knew what was going to happen, whether Israel would survive a generation, let alone a year, and here we are. Uh, 70 odd years later and they're still there uh, it, it's amazing they singled out one potential ally the former prime minister as a huge problem for us yeah the allies Donald Trump a Biden administration official this, this is the official administration's position on the election of Netanyahu to give you an idea what they really think said the White House would be troubled by the possibility that member of a member that's a really hard-line conservative could head the right-wing party. Might become a prime minister in the future Israeli government, according to Israeli Hayam. <laughs> that's interfering with foreign elections. It would be a huge problem for us, this official said. The person's not even running for prime minister. It's a potential in the future. This is not someone you want to see as part of the government. Yet Netanyahu is very smart and experienced and understands the consequences of such a development. This has not been discussed with him yet because, as mentioned, we are in an early stage. But there is no doubt that he understands. You ass. You know what? It was, uh, and I'm sure uh, almost all the Biden administration people have a free Palestine T-shirt in their house somewhere. My goal is to work for the benefit of a Jewish, democratic, nationalist, and Zionist country, said the general, who was secular but had joined Grizz party. I want to see sovereignty imposed, governance straightened, and settlements expanded. We have to strengthen our hold on the land against the view of the less wing parties who don't see the land of Israel as a primary importance. The only democracy and free state in all of the Middle East. And they're all fighting against them. All the Democrats, all the progressives, all the leftists. That should tell you exactly what you need to know. You know, I'll leave it with this. No country, just like people, are perfect. There's some things that Israel has done I'm not proud of. They've done a ton of amazing things. Same with the United States, just like people. How would you like the worst thing you've ever done to be brought out every single time you were talked to? It's not fair. If you've done 100 times more good than you've done harm, I consider that a huge positive. But I'll leave you with this. These the supposedly... Feminists and people that want to give human rights to people. The Muslims, Arabs, and especially women. There are no freer women, Muslims, or Arabs in the entire Middle East. The most freest Muslims are in Israel. Think about that for a minute. There's no Sharia law. There's nobody that's going to come and beat the hell out of your wife because she dressed improperly or drove a car. The freest Muslims in the Middle East live in Israel. That's all you really need to know on who to support. And until the next time, goodbye and good luck.